I am with uh, Mr. Nilesh Desai. He is scientist and engineer at Space Application Center at Ahmedabad. He is also a group director of microwave sensors and digital, digital electronics uh, group at SAC Ahmedabad. Uh, today he talked about uh, various applications of uh, um, space technology for common man. I, I got interested in knowing more about it. Uh, so, Mr. Desai, uh, we think that space technology is, is very expensive, it is a mega science and India being a developing country, it doesn't have enough resources even for poor people. But today you told us another dimension that it also can be used for poor people. So could you please tell us what exactly that, how it can be used for poor people or common man of India? Thank you, Dr. Kothari. Basically, as far as space technology is concerned, there are three facets of it. It's where I see the potential for applications for common man or any of the people, as a, what you call for mass consumption in our country. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a lot of rural areas and the urban population, although it is increasing. We have 70% rural. rural. Yeah, still mm -hmm. rural is predominating our country's vast resources. So in that, uh, as far as these three facets are concerned, First one is, as I mentioned, and what my topic covered today was related to remote sensing applications. Remote sensing, okay. And the second one is uh, space communication, so communication. using communication okay. technology for the through satellite and through satellite communication for uh, for the benefit of the people, people in general. In general. And third one is this navigational aids. So basically, Navi satellite navigation is the one technology in which India is now moving into. And ISRO is going to enter in a big way okay. as far as the satellite navigation program is concerned. So that will again will benefit a lot of users both in rural as well as urban areas. Navigational now, you mean the GPS system? Yeah, it is the equivalent of a, what we can call it a Indian GPS. So it is basically a constellation of seven satellites to begin with and will be augmented to 11 satellites okay. in a geosynchronous or a geo uh, stationary orbits mm -hmm. and with which it will provide all navigational services both to the common men as well as some of the restricted services for uh, strategic users also. So that GPS is very well known to yeah. masses so could you please tell us how it can be used for rural India? Yeah rural India basically uh, one of the application which um, some of my colleagues were pointing out to me was this uh, related to agriculture. Okay. So right now, when we are talking of uh, large farm areas in rural areas where mm -hmm. we have large fields mm -hmm. and even in small fields where farmers are required to apply fertilizers, uh -huh. that dispensing of the fertilizer over a particular area okay. and depending on the crops, so you need okay. different types of fertilizer, different uh, volume of fertilizer, so that all can be made automated mm -hmm. and you can utilize these navigation services. Uh, so it's like supply chain management yeah. that uh, if a rural India wants a fertilizer and there is certain inventory there and which is depleting in that case it can come from factories directly there. Uh, that is one aspect but then actually applying those fertilizer in field itself farmer can oh. utilize these services uh -huh. you like uh, instead of you will have a what we call a IRNSS receiver. So when you want to have automated dispensing of fertilizer over a large field areas, oh. that can be made automated with the aid of this IR and so then receiver. human beings are not required. Then human human be, you can manage with a less number less of people, number of people. Yeah. and everything can be automated and it will be more precise. Basically, the idea so was is, uh, you can uh, mean that way you can save on fertilizers also. Intelligent agriculture. Intelligent uh, application of fertilizers. You don't apply in vast quantity also which may have its own detrimental effect. Correct. So all these things yeah. you can have a better precision and better yield. So finally it will lead into a good agriculture yield. So that is one major application. One major application. Okay. Then okay. there is something called uh, like we have this toll tax system. Toll tax. Okay. That also can be made automated. But the one thing I would like to clarify is that navigational receivers like GPS receivers, our INSS receiver, per se stand alone they cannot do anything. It is to be integrated along with the other management system management for system. managing a particular application, oh which are natural phenomena. So, so you can monitor these fires and then come out with any remedial action possible to, to yeah, prevent this fire or curtail this aid. 
So deforestation it has to be augmented with other services. Yeah, so that's like data is you should you get you have uh, physically it is meant uh, for having a related to say highly soil moisture analysis. We call it PVT measurement. measurement. It's position so variety and time. More of ocean sanity is very then that information will be available on your receiver. But that has to be transmitted and collect. Yeah, what data with also is one area in which ground truth or other information soil moisture and for particular applicably finding out the soil moisture content. A particular area, you can find out like and try to correlate or corroborate it with the actual so water table in that particular area. Work is going on and uh, from that we can find yeah. out that as I mentioned, uh, this area is are talking about navigation and desertification capabilities. Now so we have as I mentioned, remote sensing of your desert. Where yeah, your new ideas are coming under satellite desertification for collecting so information and demonstration to our different. So that is, yeah, they are all the information related to agriculture. So it not necessarily mean desert yeah. monitoring, but say there was a atmosphere news that is uh, Rajasthan that our information related desert is growing surface. Mm. All these information you can monitor regularly collected by a series of observations. Desert also work as a being a homogeneous from the inside. Collect so everything is homogeneous. Uh, the data products will be generated from that. So they the are also being utilized to do characterization, characterization of our only photographs. Of okay. so now they work like external calibration. Application so scientists have to we can deploy some of our target images, image targets, come out with yeah, actual actual what application we data which they were uh, looking for. What kind of point target reflector. So, they, so they basically they are for agriculture, we have a crop in a particular defined manner. So that they are advanced. Basically right from the showing stage. Finally our images of data monitor at some point of time. They are more accurate. You don't have to wait for the location full crop is wrong. Before that, you have to make this estimate because then government can take appropriate action in time. For say, if you have a drought in particular year, then that information should be conveyed to government so that they can take uh, remedial actions in time. So, so crop planning is one. What so is the second? Then crop planning is one. Then we have this major problem of deforestation. Yes. So. The regular monitoring of all our forest areas is have anyway going on through this. Just year. as a curiosity, our forest area is reducing or is it increasing or it's same? It if is you have on the whole, it is reducing only. Oh. Because as you know, we have a population demand, increasing populations, lot of uh, forests are being cut, the wood is being utilized for non productive oh. usage. It is also creating its own pollution problems. All the data has come from remote sensors. Yeah, that also you see. And then you have what you call forest fires also, okay. which are natural phenomena in many places. So you can monitor these fires and then come out with any remedial action possible mm -hmm. to prevent this fire or curtail this fire. Mm -hmm. So deforestation can be sort of at least monitored. Yeah, that what is, is the third uh, application. Then you have. Uh, other application related to say this soil moisture analysis and ocean oh, yes. salinity measurement uh, because that in overall ocean salinity is a very major factor which affects water is a big problem in India so that probably can be yeah what that also is one area in which application can be found out by doing soil moisture analysis basically finding out the soil moisture content in a particular area you can find out and try to correlate or cor corroborate it with the actual water table in that particular area Our water table yeah and uh, from that we can find out uh, another area is the this desertification okay. so you know the extent of the growth of your deserts whether new areas are coming under desertification so all desertification and deforestation two are different areas yeah they are two different if a system need not necessarily mean desert, but say there was a news that our uh, Rajasthan, that Thar mm. desert is growing. Mm. Mm. So if you clearly you can monitor this monitor because the yeah. and basically desert area also work as a this being a homogeneous terrain site because everything is homogeneous if you see the terrain characteristics. Mm. So they are also being utilized to do characterization of our sensors also. So they work like external calibration sources and we can deploy some of our targets or man-made targets like we have what we call uh, point target reflectors. So they, they are metallic structure which are put in a particular defined manner and they, they are utilized to characterize our sensor so that finally our images or data products generated from our remote sensors, they are more accurate as far okay. as location accuracy as well as image resolution accuracy. Mm -hmm. So I think all these achievements, you know, feel us proud that we are proud Indians yeah. and all scientists from Space Application Center and ISRO, we are all proud of 
view that what achievements that uh, you have made, we have become one of the very few countries who has this technology. So thank you very much for coming and talking to us. Thank you so much. Thank you.